hello again uh, back again to um, just have a, a little play with these and um, I've just started stitching and I thought you know I'll switch camera on so in the last video I, I showed you these little um, stamped uh, you know plants and this one is on the velvet um, fabric so um, I just thought I'd do a little bit of stitching while uh, while I've got the while I can and and then I thought well why not turn the camera on again I think I said I might do that so why not um, I know it's like I said in the last video it's not everybody's cup of tea I'm um, watching somebody slow stitch but you know if you enjoy it then why not and um, more often than not these videos are about ins providing inspiration and ideas and all of that sort of thing but I find personally find watching videos very relaxing so and I hope you know that's also the case with uh, with my own videos for you guys for some of you guys if that's what you know if that's what you like <laughs> I'm not trying to be super straight on this, by the way. Um, I'm wondering whether just to leave it and then put it up and I could always put a little flower or something under there. So actually I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to stitch it across the top. Um, a little surprise underneath, maybe a dried flower or something. I quite often do something like that but um so what i the other thing i was going to do is i cut a little bit of this sari silk uh, not sari silk um cotton and i was thinking just to take it off the edge but i don't know if that's too much now thinking about it um i don't know i just sort of i wrapped it over the edge of the i'll do it that way around so it's um, yeah, I thought if I wrapped it over the top of there, maybe it does look okay. Just going to pin it and let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I think I quite like that actually. Okay, I'm going to do that. That was an easy decision. Um, need to make sure it's in, in the centre. I'm wondering whether that weighs better. Just about the dots and where the dots are and whether they're even. Do I need to... Yeah, I'm going to um, just, you know... Um, Start again with the needle and thread. Yeah, so you can see the paper behind this one. This, this is often, um, I get these little, or I used to get these, I don't I haven't been, done it for a long time, but I used to get these little um, samples um, from fabric um, shops. Uh, not fabric shops so much, but, um, you know, uh, text... What would you call it? I don't know, but shops that sell curtains and things like that, they often have like fabric books, uh, sample books. And, um, it, you know, at one point I would be going around looking and seeing if anybody, asking people if they had any spare fabrics to, uh, to do projects with. And um, quite often, yeah, they, they would often be quite, you know generous and give um for free um sometimes i paid and sometimes they were free oh. this is looking a bit messy i hope i'm on camera i'm just gonna take some of this off i quite like that Doing a little, um, just 
an ordinary stitch but I'm just wondering whether to just sort of um, no I was gonna say make it a decorative stitch but no I don't want, I don't need to make it more complicated for myself do I um, Just taking it Oops. I do seem to be all fingers and thumbs lately. I'm using super big needles and it's unnecessary and I don't need to use these big needles really. But they were handy, so um trying to think if there's anything to tell you guys there is something but it's quite sad news really and um yeah um I wasn't sure whether to say something but you know what I, yesterday I was talking about it being you know part of a community and if we are indeed a community we share don't we and um so I will share my very sad news is that my poor well she's actually um our family cat she's my daughter's cat she uh millie but she lives with me and um because she was very old and um yeah she you know my daughter has two very noisy children and so you know i brought her to live with me for peace and quiet in her old age but um unfortunately um she passed away yesterday and um so yeah, it's quite devastating really. She had a lymphoma and um, was quite poorly. Uh, but, you know, she's at peace now. And it's very sad, but we were, uh, you know, we have our moments, but we're, we're, um, we're we know that it was best for her that she didn't suffer anymore. So um, her name was Millie and she was a beautiful cat. Um, you know, as time has gone on, she became more and more frail, more raggedy looking. It was just a huge um, change in her over the last uh, few years, a uh, few years, sorry, um, months. I'm thinking while I'm talking to you guys, I'm, I'm just looking for some a different thread. Um, so yeah, it's very sad. Uh, but like I said, we're we're grateful for. I said she was. I think I mentioned yes yesterday that she or eight, no, it wasn't yesterday because I didn't. Um, it was the day before, yeah. So I mentioned that she was 18. She was actually 19. Um, so I got that. I got her age wrong because... And then I remembered yes, um, last night thinking about her. 19 is a very good age for a cat. Um, so she did very well. She wasn't an outdoor cat. Well, she did. She was outdoor, but she didn't... Um, she didn't roam like a lot of cats do. She wasn't someone who, ro um, you know, she wasn't a cat that roamed away from the house. She was always in the garden and um, didn't really venture out anywhere. It was just, she liked to, I suppose she liked the comfort of being, you know, in her own garden and, um, Uh, yeah, so, but she had a good long life and, um, you know, we, we do, unfortunately, it's one of the things of having pets that eventually we do have to say goodbye to them, which is uh, heartbreaking, but inevitable and um, that's, you know, when we, when we have pets, we know this is going to, to happen at some point. Um, it's always you can't really prepare yourself for it 
but you know um, we, we just try to give her the best life that we could and the same with little Ralph our little dog um, you know he's now 15 it's coming up to 16 and uh, again a really long life um, I'm trying to decide with this one whether to go all the way around and I think I will um, So yeah, that's my news. Uh, um, yeah, so, and I went for a walk with my sister yesterday. We, um, again, we, she took me to another new place to, to do some foraging. We did, I didn't actually forage. Um, I just wasn't in the mood, but I did, make a note of where things are and saw lots of um we were by the river um and um there were lots of you know plants that i would ordinarily forage at this time of the year um growing abundantly so it was sort of a good thing to note for maybe another time um i haven't done an awful lot in the apothecary um for those of you who are new i have a small apothecary um, it's a home apothecary, um, although I have sold, um, you know, various remed home remedies and uh, herbal remedies rather um, in the form of teas and tinctures and all sorts of things, salves. Um, uh, various, various um, portions put it that way <laughs> um yeah uh so and it, it's where the name the still room comes from um i don't think i should have yeah it's okay um yeah so it's where the name the still room comes from and um a little bit of background to the still room so the still room uh, I, the name still room comes from, I don't think I've mentioned this in the past, um, so bear, if I have I apologise for repeating myself, but I don't think that I have. But yeah, the, so the, the still room um, was the name of a room in those large country houses in the sort of, I think it was probably 1800s, maybe later. Um, and, you know, you would have your Lord of the Manor, Lady of the Manor, and um, they would have these, you know, large country houses. And um, there, within some of those houses, there would be a room called a still room. And still room was short for, um, I suppose, distilling. Um, because they would distill alcohol. Um and um, they would also, it would be a room, a multi-function room really, a multi-purpose room because they would also have, keep her medicines covered in there. And, um, you know, back then it was, a lot of the medicines were um, herbal remedies. Um, so yes, yeah, so the, oh, actually, now there's another idea. Maybe I use that as a little pocket. I mean, does it look odd with it just being dark? But then that, that makes it obvious it's a pocket, doesn't it? If I keep that like that. I'm going to keep that like that. I think. Shall I? Um, trying to decide if I've got a little piece of paper and then I can just, if I took it, took a little, a little secret little note in there. That would be quite fun, but it, it wouldn't, if I hadn't used dark green thread, I might have felt a bit more certain about it, but um, I'm going to um, stop sewing and um, anyway, because I've run out of thread and then I'll see how I feel about it. Um, so yes, so the room, um, you know, the Lady of the Manor or uh, an important member of staff, you know, likely high at the highest 
member of staff would have the keys to the still room so they would be called the, key, the still room keeper which is where my other name comes from and um they they would have the keys to the medicine chest that's how um that's how that came about the other thing they would do is they would you know it would be a room that flowers would be arranged um it would probably be an extension to the kitchen so um you know it would be in an interesting room with lots of things going on in there um and like i said you know the the room was often the domain of a particular member of staff or the lady of the manor i don't think it was a room that would be occupied by a male member of staff i think it was female i could be wrong maybe the butler or somebody um got involved i don't know um but yes that's where the name comes from so there would be all sorts of there would be herbs drying uh in there there would be um you know um alcohol being distilled and um flower arranging as i said and i'm sure lots of other things as well that i can't think off the top of my head but yeah it would be quite a a busy um place apart you know the, the medicines the poisons in the reason the, the um uh you know it was kept under lock and key was because well to stop um stealing but also for po because there were poisons in there as, as you probably realize that a lot of the uh, medicines back in those days were poisonous um you know the use of arsenic and various other uh, digitalis and things like that were all um poisonous highly poisonous medicines and so needed to be used with caution and uh and help you know kept under lock and key um so yes yeah, so that was why it was a trusted member of staff that would be allocated the key to that so there you go that that's just a little bit of background and my apothecary is a small apothecary and um i have been selling i blend herbal teas so um my teas are blended i have a sort of around about six or seven um particular right does i not caught that on there yeah i think it's okay yeah six or seven of my own sort of um teas that i blend regularly um and then the other teas i make up as bespoke teas uh, for customers so if a customer for example comes to me and says you know they have a particular ailment then um you know i would make a suggestion on what they might um you know what they might what might benefit them and then you know do a blend so um depending on their circumstances the information that they provide to me i would create a blend and um, a pleasant usually a pleasant tasting blend i try not to you know go all out and um uh, you know and nothing sort of obscure or anything like that i'm very cautious about what i give to people um but yeah so um one of the blends which is particularly nice is a rose blend um so i have a nice rose blend well i have a few rose blends actually but um roses are one of my favorite flowers and uh, um you know also one of the blends that i put a lot of um effort into making and rose oil uh rose elixir which is um a really beautiful remedy for grief and um you know so fairly appropriate for me right now um it's so, so it, rose is good for grief it's good for the heart as in as in the emotional heart and um you know you you would take it maybe to um help with um 
you know, if you're struggling with anxiety or, um, you know, stress and you wanted to relax a little bit, you want to feel a bit pampered, a bit um, looked after um, and cared for, Rose cares for you and um, matters of the heart as well, you know, anybody who's going through an emotional breakup um, or something like that, it's very good for that and um, so elixir um, as opposed to say for example a tea or um, a tincture an elixir is generally uh, made up from in my case this is what I would make what I would use is I would steep rose petals and rosebuds in brandy a nice French brandy and then I would um, then I would when once um well actually no beforehand i would also steep it in honey so honey and brandy basically and then you leave it to um do its thing for a couple of months three months maybe two to three months and then um it's ready and the smell of roses is just oh it's gorgeous so, um, and you would take it like you would a tincture. So you take drops on the tongue, basically, because it's in a very, you know, you get a small amount. You don't take a, lot, a large amount. Um, some people who don't like um, to take alcohol or allergic to alcohol, um, vegetable glycerin. So it can be taken with vegetable glycerin. And um, it, it's a, get the same thing you do, you know, you sort of steep the roses in the vegetable glycerin. If for the problem with, uh, obviously if you're steeping um, roses in brandy and honey, it's going to be very um, sweet um, with a distinctive, you know, alcohol flavor. But, um, in, in the vegetable glycerin is also extremely sweet and so it suits you could you know would if you were going to give a child it for example um, if they were struggling with their emotions for whatever reason then um, yeah you would give them the vegetable glycerin and it's completely harmless and um, you know um, so you would, you would use that instead of the brandy and it draws out the, the the properties within the rose, what have you, in the same way. It's slightly less potent in terms of a medicine or a, a herbal remedy, but certainly still, um, you know, a lot of people would still find benefit from it. So, right, so I've already threaded my needle and I haven't thought about what colours I want. So I was wondering whether I should go with green on this because, you know, obviously green, yeah, in fact, I will. So I didn't go with green on that. One of the reasons is it's a slightly sort of a brighter green um, there. And I like the blue and I didn't want to detract from that. So I left it cream. Um, and I did the whole thing as opposed to this and this. And now this one I think I'm going to do in green despite having thread threaded my needle. I'll get a different needle easily done so yeah anyway that was just a bit of information um for you um so if you wanted to know more i'll be happy to um tell you more a little bit more about those sorts of remedies and i you know i said before i'm happy to do a video um maybe a tutorial on, on something uh, blending a tease or blending herbs for something else or just um you know make making up a, a salve um something like that so if you'd like to see that then i'd be happy to do it i may well do it and then um you know i wasn't sure whether to combine the thing the two aspects on on this channel and i i know i have talked about herbs it previously but um yeah i just i wondered whether it was something people are interested in and so um, I'm happy to share the knowledge. Um, I have a little bit of training in herbal remedies or herbal medicine um, 
but I'm not formally trained as a, a medical herbalist, which is recommended um, in this day and age, but you know, it's not necessary. You can still, you know, um, create your own remedies, just like your grandmother did. And um, it's really about common sense and um, making sure that you do your homework. Um, like I said, I have done some um, courses and training, but, um, you know, and I've sp spent years learning it so um, I feel capable in that respect but um, yeah I recommend that um, if anybody's interested in the subject to to you know maybe do a little bit of research and look into it and then uh, you know the rest is sort of uh, getting advice and and uh, trying things out you know um, making sure that the main the main things are making sure about toxicity in plants and um you know drug interactions and also obviously if somebody has a, a health condition for like for example a heart condition or something like that and they're on a particular medication and or a pregnant and a breastfeeding mother or you know somebody with um diabetes that sort of thing you want to make sure that you know about those things if people are asking you to blend herbs for them <laughs> Um, because you know obviously there are risks involved um, so yeah just that's that's it basically uh, but yeah a lot of it can be found I mean be, be wary of looking online um, I would say that on you know because there's websites that do you know do give incorrect information um, I would be very wary about taking, you know, advice from, from, um, you know, a search on Google, for example. However, um, generally speaking, one of the um, places I would recommend to have a look is Indigo Herbs, which is online, and that is a herbal shop, so you could get your dried herbs from there if you're not growing your own, and they also have good information good solid information regarding the herbs um so yeah it's worth looking at that website as well if you're thinking about creating your own remedies and like i said you know a lot of people do it for the oh, it's always a bit stitch didn't really want it but it doesn't matter um a lot of people do it um for their families you know um they don't want to be they want to know what's going on their child's skin for dry skin conditions or they want to know um you know it's very easy to make an elderberry syrup for example for um you know winter coughs and colds and things like that and um it should be safe um there shouldn't be any reason why that isn't safe to give someone uh, so uh, just like you would lemon and honey you know a similar thing really you're using fruit and um the honey we all know honey is good for us um has very good healing properties so it's just using the natural environment to uh, to look after your health as much as possible but that's not to say we don't carry on with um you know the the uh the medications and, and what have you that through your gp or your wherever you are whatever system you have or in your country so anyway um yeah i know i've rabbited on um i just wanted to share that i suppose i uh, hadn't planned it um but yeah so just while i'm stitching it's nice to have a little chat um, right, so now, um, I do think that looks strange. I can't deny that. Uh, but I, I really like the idea of putting a little something in there, you know, a little secret message. <laughs> Hardly secret. Oh. Um, yeah, and the other thing I could do, uh, you know, is add something like that to the top of this one. 
Um, obviously, you know, I'd added that to the top of there. I've got the black and white, black and green. Mm, not as keen on that one. Um, but yeah, so I could add. I've got plenty of ribbons and things that I could add. Let's have a look, see what we've got here. And so um, I'd add a bit of this just to decorate the top of it, you know. Although that's a bit bulky, I think. It's a bit overpowered, just a little bit, but um, let's see what this is like. Um, a little bit of brown. Maybe. I actually think lace is probably better. So, anyway. Um, look. Is anything else to hand without having to get off from the table and... Um, but I do, you know, I've got this lace here, uh, not lace, um, this lace that I could use, which is really nice. Put it at the bottom. That's nice. Doesn't always have to be at the top. Uh, actually, it's nice at the bottom there as well. Maybe if I put that further up, but then... What I might do is actually undo the stitching and do it in the cream and then it won't be so obvious because I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with that. So I'm going to take that out and, and start again with that one because I would like to have a little secret pocket there. Um, nothing wrong with starting again, you know, if, it, if we get it wrong. It's not like it's wrong, it's just preference. Easily undone. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm aware that talking about herbal remedies um, in an offhand way, um, it's probably not the best idea for me to do because I've got a terrible memory and um, I wouldn't want to give any misinformation. So if I were to do anything with um, any herbs um, or remedies or anything to do with that, it were, I would be preparing well in advance to, to make sure that I was giving absolutely 100% correct information. And so, yeah, nothing, anything... Um, that I talk about would I would make sure that it's not it's correct put it that way so um, correct and verified <laughs> but as I say if I can do it anybody can do it um, it's just taken me a few years I weirdly though I have been interested in herbs all my life and I mean like uh, as long as I can remember going right back to being I had a, a fascination for roses as a young girl and then um, as an adult in my very first home I had a garden and planted everything flowers herbs vegetables um, and that was when I was 19 and um, or 20 20 and then from then on you know it's just been uh obviously we're having a small some small children at one point you know um i didn't have all the time in the world to do to to uh l you know learn about herbalism but yeah i i made sure that i um learned as much as i could at any given time and um and gradually increase. I mean, my mum was a, a gardener, and so she passed her love of gardening on to me, and that you know knowledge as well. And um, I just took took that and went went with it. And then uh, 
increased my knowledge over time and added to my interests with herbs and but yeah I mean I, I've got a herbal book that I've had for many 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 years um, you know going right back to the time when I was um, my children were small and they're in their 30s now coming up to 40 uh, so yeah you can imagine for a long time reason I haven't been doing running stitch like this is just because um, I don't like the big gaps. I prefer to have smaller gaps and I find it difficult to create small gaps when I do that sort of running stitch. Um, I'm not, I think it's called running stitch. Um, when you, you know, just push your needle through over and over like that. But I find it hard to get smaller um, gaps when I do that. Or smaller, you know, in smaller stitches, so. Yeah. Um. I think um, one of the things I've noticed like um, with with other crafters, you know, uh, YouTube crafters, is they often have days of the week where they do specific things so that anybody who wants to craft along can do so because you know to expect it um, on a certain day. So, for example, if it was a Monday, you know, I might be doing, I don't know, um, a particular project every Monday um, or, or or on a Thursday or whatever you know um, different projects different days and then if you know craft alongs um, so where um, yeah you might want to do something like that um, you know where you can prepare so you know what to expect, you know what's coming and you can prepare your materials and uh, gather everything around you and then, you know, we do it together. Um, I quite like that idea. You know, I mean, as, as I was talking about in one of my recent videos, you know, that I would love it if we could develop more of a community. Um, and that would be one way I think I could do that, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'll have a look into that and um, and also try to include other crafts if people are interested in other crafts. As I said in the last one, if you've got anything that you would like, uh, you know, if, you, if you've if you got an idea, um, share it with me and let's see if it's something that we couldn't do. Um, either as a collaboration or just you know so if you wanted to see a tutorial on something um if you're a beginner um i don't know how many of you are crafting anyway yourselves and probably know a fair bit more than i do to be honest in terms of junk journaling because i you know i'm a relative beginner um it's only in the last year that i've been doing videos and probably Mm. So I'd say two years, gosh, two years since um, you know, I started watching YouTube videos and learning, and then maybe it's eighteen months or I don't know. I can't remember how long I've been on now. Um, I know I've done a fair few videos. I was looking at the amount that I've done, and it's quite a lot. So yeah, just just maybe I'll do that. Um, plan days of the week. It is hard for me to plan, but uh, I will. I could maybe try and do a couple of days a week where I plan it. I 
I mean, you don't even have to watch a live to really, do you? You don't. I don't do live. <laughs> Yeah, I'm much happier with that. It's not so obvious and nice little pocket there. So probably been on long enough and um, you know chatted enough so um, yeah so anyway I hope you enjoyed that and yeah um, I hope you're all well and it would be um, lovely to hear from you and take care and I'll see you again soon so bye for now